everybody, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. It's time for a crochet quick fix. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, head on over to the craft table, and let's stitch it up together. Hey everybody, tonight we are going to make a plastic bag holder or dispenser. So a lot of us are moving from using the plastic bags to reusable bags, but plastic bags just keep piling up whether you intend to get them or not. Sometimes they come wrapped in things that you purchase online, maybe people bring things to your house in them. Sometimes we just can't avoid plastic bags. So it's great when we can reuse them uh, and recycle them as best we can, and in the meantime it's nice to have a place to keep them all. So we're going to make this little plastic bag holder. It's something you can hang in your broom closet or perhaps underneath the Sink. I'm going to show you how you can make them any length that you want and we're going to use a fun expandable pattern. This is a stitch pattern from our 2018 Victorian stitch sampler blanket. This is the soaring split shells pattern. Now you can also make this out of a size 4 medium weight yarn that's any fiber you want. This one here I made out of cotton, but I also have a really fun ball of acrylic variegated yarn that I'm going to use to make the one tonight. You only need around 80 grams, probably less, for the size that I made here. And if you're going to make it bigger, maybe think about having 100 grams or so. This does not eat up a whole lot of yarn. I could probably get two complete bag dispensers out of a skein of yarn this big. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and we're using a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an eye or a nine in the US, a size five in the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin at the bottom of our little bag dispenser. So we're going to start with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 20 to begin. Once you have a chained length of 20, count it up, make sure you have 20. Do not twist it, so make sure it's all nice and flat. We're going to join to make a big circle with a slip stitch to the first chain we made. And we're going to chain three. This chain three is going to count as a double crochet. Into that same chain that we joined in, we're going to work another double crochet. And now we're going to work two double crochet into each chain all the way around. And a lot of people always ask, do I use the top loop or the bottom loop? It doesn't really matter, but I do like to use the, I sort of try to slip my hook in between the bottom loop and the top bits. So if you see me sort of sticking my, my hook down towards the bottom of the loop, that just kind of, I feel, gives me a stronger stitch base for working over top of. And it also makes for a neat and tidy little bottom edge to the crochet as you can see right there. So two double crochet into each chain all the way around. You'll have 40 double crochet, including that chain three that we began with, when you get round to the beginning again. Once you get back round to the beginning, you will have 40 stitches, and that includes that chain three that we began with. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three. And now we're going to begin our split, soaring split shell pattern. So we're going to chain one to begin. And into that same space that we joined our last row, so the same stitch that we joined in, we're going to work a single crochet. Chain five. Skip four stitches. Find the fifth one and work a single crochet into it. Chain five. Skip four stitches, find the fifth one, and single crochet into it. And that's all you're going to do all the way around. Chain five, skip four, single crochet into the next stitch. You will have eight chain five spaces all the way around when you're done. So after you work your last chain five, you're gonna jump over top to that single crochet that you began the row with, and you're gonna join with a slip stitch to the top of that single crochet. So join to the top of that single crochet. That gives you eight chain five spaces. And now we're going to work a row of split shells. To begin this row, we're going to slip stitch into the next 
chain 5 space, so just slip stitch into it, chain 3 to begin, this will count as a double crochet, we're going to double crochet once more into that big chain 5 space, chain 2, and work two more double crochet all into the same chain 5 space. So two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet is a split shell and it looks something like that. Jump over to the next chain 5 space and work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into it. And you're going to work that all the way around. So for every single chain 5 space you're going to work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into it. You will have eight split shells at the end of this row. When you get back around to the beginning and you've worked your last split shell into your last chain 5 space, find the top of the chain 3 that you began with and join with a split, a slip stitch, pardon me, slip stitch. You'll have eight split shells all the way around and they're already starting to soar thanks to those nice big chain 5 spaces. We're back to the little single crochet chain 5 repeater, so this is a two row repeater pattern. Uh, the odd row is the single crochet chain 5 row and the even row is the split shell pattern. So to begin in an odd row, in this case row 3, we want to start in the space between split shells. So because we're just past it, we're going to actually just slip stitch backwards into that space between split shells. So basically you're just plunking your hook backwards through that, that space between the split shells and slip stitching. We're going to chain one and in the same space we're going to single crochet. So that's how an odd row begins. You slip stitch backwards into the space between split shells, chain one and single crochet all into that space. Chain five skip a split shell, find the space between them, and single crochet right into that space. Chain 5, jump over to the next space between split shells, and single crochet. And that's all you have to do all the way around. Chain 5 in between single crochets, the single crochets sit between your split shells. You'll still have 8 chain 5 spaces at the end of this row. When you get back to the beginning, find that single crochet that you began with, so you chain your last 5, skip your last split shell, and join with a slip stitch to the top of that single crochet. Every even row or split shell row begins by slip stitching forward into that chain 5 space, chain 3 to begin, that counts as a double crochet, and you complete your first split shell in that chain 5 space, and that's another double crochet, chain 2, and then 2 double crochet, because our chain 3 counts. So a split shell is two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Work that all the way around. When you get back to the beginning, join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that you began the row with. To finish every even row, which is a split shell row, you join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three. And to begin an odd row, so to set yourself up for the next row, you remember to slip stitch backwards into that space between split shells, so you slip stitch backwards, chain one and single crochet into the same spot and that sets you up for your odd row. Chain five, single crochet in between the next split shell and so on. Now you can work this pattern, the odd even, odd even repeating rows as tall as you want, so if you've got a lot of bags that you want to have handy then you can make this a bit, a bit longer than I have here, but I've repeated this odd even, odd even row until I had nine sets, so I've got nine sets of that repeating row and then I worked one more odd row above that row of split shells. So in other words, this last little row before we finish it off would be row 20 up here. Row 1 remember is just that row of double crochet, 
and then we start with the actual pattern stitch. And the reason I say this is an odd row and an even row is because the pattern stitch consists of the single crochet chain five being row one of the pattern repeater and the split, show pat split shell pattern being the second row of the pattern repeater. So odd, even, odd, even, despite the fact that we've started it technically on row two. So not to confuse anyone, <laughs> but you wanna repeat that little pattern repeater about nine times. And then we're gonna finish off with an extra row of the odd, the odd pattern row. So that single crochet chain fives right on top of that before we get to the very top of our little bag dispenser. So I'm gonna let you work on that even odd or odd even repeater row for a little while and I'll catch up with you in a bit. I have worked the little pattern repeater nine and a half times in total. So there's nine rows of split shells, if you count up just the split shell rows. And then once I got up and finished my ninth row of split shells, remember they're all separated by those little odd single crochet chain five rows. I added another odd row on top of that. So single crochet chain five in between all of my split shells. So if you're just going to count these split shells, you should have nine rows of those, and then one little odd row on top. Now we're gonna finish off our little sack with just a simple little edge of double crochets before we add our handle. So as though we were starting another row of split shells, we're going to slip stitch into the chain five space, but we're not working split shells anymore. We're just gonna work double crochets like we did around the bottom when we began. We're gonna chain three to begin, this chain three will count as a double crochet. You're gonna work four more double crochets into this same chain five space. So there's a chain three plus four double crochets, that counts as five double crochets in that chain five space. You're gonna to move to the next chain five space and work five double crochets into it. You're gonna work five double crochets into each of those chain five spaces all the way around. You'll have 40 stitches at the end of this row. Remember your chain three counts as a double crochet. And I'll catch up with you when we get back around to the beginning. So that's five double crochet into each of those chain five spaces all the way around. We're gonna join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three that began the row. And now we're going to add a little handle. So this whole thing is worked without breaking our yarn, which is really nice. We're gonna chain 25. So chain 25. And once you have a chain of 25, you're gonna just sort of press your little dispenser in half, roughly, and you're just going to pick any stitch that's pretty much directly across from where you started chaining. So just sort of reach across to the opposite side and you're going to slip stitch to join. This doesn't really matter, you just kinda of wanna eyeball it. You're working to slip stitch directly into a stitch across from where you started chaining. We're gonna chain two. Count up two stitches. So count up two stitches along the edge of your dispenser. Slip stitch into the third one. And now you're going to double crochet into each of those chains all the way back to the beginning. So you might wanna sort of turn your chain so that you're looking at the top of them. And don't get confused by where you slip stitch. So if you sort of see where your chains landed, you're gonna find the first one, double crochet into it. It helps if you just sort of sit your work on your lap or your working space. And you're just going to double crochet into each of those chains all the way back to the beginning. Once you've double crocheted into every single chain all the way back, so you see we've anchored it here, you've double crocheted into every chain all the way back to the beginning. 
you're going to skip two stitches along the edge of your dispenser <laughs> and slip stitch into the third so that you're anchoring your little handle at both ends. Then you can trim your yarn Fasten off. And I have to say, I just love how merrily this this dispenser turned out. Look at that crazy rainbow variegated yarn. It looks like so much fun. <laughs> Grab your yarn needle. You can bring your yarn down through the inside loops of a few of those double crochet. And we're just going to weave our tail back and forth underneath some of those stitches from that last full row of double crochet that we did. And there you have it, a nice, stretchy, expandable plastic bag dispenser, perfect for all those plastic bags you may have accumulated and are trying to use up, or even if you have those compostable bags for your compost. It's a great little place to have them all stashed. You can hang them in your broom closet or just underneath your sink or anywhere you feel that that is helpful. You can hang it on a hook, hang it on a hanger. You can make it in cotton, acrylic, whatever you have lying around, solid, variegated, whatever you want. They make great little gifts too for anybody who is maybe moving into a new house, a new apartment, and wants to try and keep things neat and tidy and organized, especially in a small space. We hope you had fun making this along with us today, and a big special thanks to our family members who helped us choose today's pattern tutorial. Thank you so much for being a member of our show. We really appreciate it. And if you're interested in joining our channel and becoming a family member, you can click on the join button or the link in the description box down below and check it out. All of the information is there and if you have any questions please feel free to leave it in the comment section. We'll see you again soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week everybody. Bye! Hi everyone, this is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.